Beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed son. Stay blessed. From the pages of my heart Let my worship begin that never end. Sing it again. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends to the God of all flesh. You're my God and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. tonight change our lives let it be an encounter in your presence in the name of Jesus let the sick be healed tonight let the oppressed be delivered grant us illumination access to light in the name of Jesus let us encounter your anointing and let it create possibilities in our lives in the name of Jesus God bless you please be seated good to be back I apologize last week um, for the first time couldn't make it for the miracle service but I want us to appreciate Pastor Jimmy alongside all the leaders that were with him it was such such a powerful time last week thank you sir God bless you thank you sirs in the name of Jesus Christ um, I welcome everyone tonight. It's a great time. Let me just quickly acknowledge the assistant chaplain of Adama State University. He's here with us. Thank you so much, sir. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Wonderful people. They are the people who make me always want to go to Adama State. I mean, they would so, so pamper you. God bless you. If you're from Adama State, make sure you be like them. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I don't know if they are around. My dear friend told me he was going to be here. Dr. Lucas Satlong from Joss. Is he here? Oh, he's there. God bless you. And then his friend, Dr. John. Am I right? God bless you. Please, thank you. Let's honor them. 
wonderful wonderful men of god the medical doctors also thank you sir for coming the lord increase you in the name of jesus christ prophesy to yourself and say i receive understanding say it again i receive understanding turn it into prayer lord grant me great understanding tonight understanding the entrance of thy word give it light and understanding unto the simple hallelujah praise the lord tonight i'm going to be touching on a number of things and then we'll pray um As I have traveled, especially in recent times, I have, I have been humbled, let me tell you sincerely, at, at the prophetic words that the Lord spoke to me many years ago. I have seen it in regions, campuses, and I am truly humbled to see that when God speaks, um, He is reliable it pays to trust him it may not look like it but if you trust him he will surprise you hallelujah and i was sharing i think with our dear school of ministry students yesterday during the lectures and i was telling them that one of my personal goals in this life is to inspire my generation to love god to seek him and to be revealers of his possibilities this is my inspiration to my generation i hope that one day a generation will look at my life and be inspired to love god to seek him and not just to stop there that their lives will become portraits of the possibilities that a man can demonstrate if and when he's one with god are we together now and so all the teachings that we bring here are an attempt a contribution you can call it to open us up and help build that we rise to that point where we not only know god but we understand his ways it's, it's very arrogant for me to have to be the one saying this but let me tell you sincerely i love and i care about every one of you from the depth of my heart it, it shouldn't be me saying it but i say it because it's the truth it matters to me that your knowledge of god is rich it matters to me that your conformity to the fullness of all that he is and he represents is rich in your life it matters to me also that you gain intelligence spiritually that you come to a point where your life is furnished with thorough understanding you are not unfruitful in the knowledge of the truth you can know god as a person and still be unfruitful in the knowledge of the systems of the kingdom you hear me say this i will keep repeating it until it becomes your convictions because the operation of god on earth in as much as the bible has revealed to us is systemic are we together god is the god of systems when you encounter his person then he grants you the ability to understand his ways his methodology his systems the results that we seek are dependent on our comprehension and engaging of the systems accordingly are we together so on one hand we are coming into the knowledge of God intimacy here and there but then we must understand his ways listen let me tell you this our destinies the quality of our destinies on earth not only depend on the love of God for us but our ability to understand his ways of doing things are we together now to be able to replicate his reality in our environment that's the whole idea of kingdom come it's not a mystery is to be able to sustain the ability to make your life become an expression in every area every area remember there's a scripture we've been playing around with very recently the bible says second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 he says according as 
verse 2 says grace and peace be multiplied to you you know through the knowledge of him of our god and of our lord jesus christ verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us how many things all things that pertain unto what apostle peter would have just stopped and said his divine power hath given us all things that would have been enough but he says those all things are divided into two categories the matters that pertain unto life and the matters that pertain unto godliness everyone say after me life godliness say one more time life godliness there are matters that pertain unto godliness for instance your spiritual growth right the the issues of the spirit when i open you up to the dimensions of the spirit the anointing understanding the ways of god digging into the boils of the spirit to be able to come up with the things that help you to conform better to become a spiritual man these are the things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life the well-being of your children matters that pertain unto life is that true the ability to not be under the yoke of this godless system that has designed a structure to strangle any intention to be serious with god there is a system intentionally built that's what is captured in the mystery babylon a system that was built with intelligence intended to frustrate any desire to be serious with god and so the system operates in many ways by making men busy by making men poor by making men mediocre by making them frustrated to lack a sense of purpose that those who are not of the world will continue to pay tribute in cash and in kind with their time and with their lives but there is a bailout system and the bible says they are matters that pertain unto life no matter how anointed you are when you watch your child being driven out of school it will frustrate your christian experience now i have said it again and again we do not serve god just because of tea and bread listen very carefully we don't serve god because of the things that he gives us we serve him because of who he is and our love for him but he has so designed in his wisdom that in serving him you encounter other things the ability to attend to the matters of life because in doing so you demonstrate that he is a good father number two in doing so you demonstrate dominion number three in doing so it affords you the time to further commit yourself are we together there is a conspiracy it's always been there but it's been reinforced again this system of satan occupying men their time their life to never allow them serve god do you know why many of the people we call god's generals were powerful they gave god time that is the commodity that satan is fighting today in our generation time you never know anything without giving it time you meet a full animal he can whisper something to his cows and they will behave themselves because he spends time with them you don't wake up and come one morning and tell a cow move left these are animals our time with god is under attack hear me carefully our time with god that is the principal factor that sponsors our knowledge of him is under serious attack and if a generation does not stand up to say satan what are you doing our children you see these little kids running up and down they will no longer have time for god there is a system that is derailing men away and is doing it in a very subtle way it's not happening overnight you check the schedules of the average man there is nothing about god there aside from one religious devotion that is done in 10 minutes god is not you can't give god 10 minutes of your time and want to host his glory you come back to sleep you are tired and it's not like you were doing anything kingdom satan system he manipulates men like he's playing a chess something is wrong brothers and sisters 
this is i'm starting tonight with a clarion call something is wrong our generation really needs to seek the lord but not under the conditions that the devil has put us in you're not going to seek the lord when your rent is about killing you you will just dance around and give thanks but not to seek the lord it's amazing how we have to sit down and specially create time for god we don't specially create time for money we are seeking it all our lives we don't specially create time for fame we don't specially create time for a living but when it comes to god there has to be an extra effort it says as for me and my house it didn't say we'll be christians we will it's a commitment as for he was not saying as for a pastor who is now into this body called ministry say as for me and my house i have made a decision that i will serve the lord our generation is under serious threat look how hard the devil has made it for an average young man to be established even at age 40 he has not even started establishment if he's to live 80 years that's half of his life gone and don't forget that when he's 60 70 his strength may not be there again and the bible says that we should serve god in the days of our youth so he rubbishes the days of our youth so that we spend our entire life looking for what to eat what to drink trying to educate our minds trying to earn a living and then we give him some little time devotions here one program one emotional crusade here we will never it's impossible to institutionalize god to a generation that way if we want our children and our children's children to serve the lord let me tell you we must make god a big deal in our generation not a factor you add to your life if you are a christian but the basis of your living i'm concerned especially about our teenagers most of them don't know god again ask them when we were teenagers one young man who is not even serious just a sunday school goer can recite 30 verses it doesn't matter whether he loves god or not but you ask one of these are young ones to recite even john 3 16 that unbelievers who were passing around church knew you ask them and hear what they will tell you but ask them what is the latest app the latest computer game huh the latest uh, what do we call it all these funny things they are not wrong in themselves but something is happening to a generation if we don't pay attention we will cry in old age and say lord did i fail my generation these are my contemplations the level of non-attention to god is becoming a thing of concern we are going to churches sundays churches are full with members wednesday activity i'm talking of seeking the lord not as a profession for a man of god where he gets salary at the end of the month as for me and my house i will serve the lord most people who serve the lord is because they have given up on the matters of life there is no hope of sending any child to school there is no hope of anything they know they would die whether or not they serve the lord so they say okay since i have two years left let me just try to do something no our generation has brought an option be poor and fail and serve the lord or be blessed and be occupied trying to make a living who gave us that option as for me and my house i will serve the lord that one day i will come to your house on a weekday and hear sounds of worship from your gate not cassette you and your four children are serving the lord and i say by two o'clock I thought you should be earning a living and you say he showed me another system now we are serving the lord and visitors pull their mouth while they are languishing in the squalor of rebellion and watch you say pastor alpha you are serving the lord jedediah is 12 years 
and his teenager friends are there all around smoking their destinies away and this child is there serving the Lord it is selfishness and wickedness that makes us to forget the generation that is coming I'm sorry to say it and I, I love our parents we have many of our elderly people here I love them but one of the mistakes that our fathers made was they were very selfish they did not remember that a generation was coming so all they did was to educate their minds and look for food to eat there's hardly any heritage given to a young man every young man starts almost from ground zero spiritually financially the time a young man should use building his spirit is fighting warfare because the chains that have held him at party he must spend one year contending for victory as for me and my house i can't claim it for everybody but as for me and my house we will serve the lord how many of us here got born again directly by our parents how many of you some of us were just around and salvation by the mercy of god met you in one sunday school some of you salvation met you at the point of death did you know that for many of us we never had the talk about god we had godliness in a religious way every time there was bible study something happened a sound in the zinc demotion that was imminent or something that sponsored some emotional reaction say as for me and my house say as for me and my house i will serve the lord are we together yes it matters that we make this decision right now that we will serve the lord we will serve the lord I've been doing a lot of counseling lately especially for our dear ones that are getting married and I look at them my first concern is will your home serve the Lord will your life serve the Lord let me tell you there is a wicked Babylonian financial system there that was designed to make sure you don't serve the Lord how can one man do five jobs because he's trying to pay rent it's a cause you wake up by six do a job to 12 and satan makes sure a stipend comes from there and then you start another one till four and your body is weak but you know if you don't do this you will not eat well and you start another one and in the next five years that man dies and leaves seven children look at our dear mothers Hi, something is wrong go listen to me i came tonight to talk to you from the depth of my heart it's a vow i build myself that's the truth you bail yourself through a commitment of obedience but my job is to share this with you that if we don't wake up and join ignorant people or this proud religiosity that only focuses on the matters of godliness and leaves the matters of life one day you will stand and watch you will be a mighty man of god with a big parish and your wife and you will watch your children with pity a letter come and stand before you we've been expelled not because we smoked not because we drank because the means to make it happen was not there you will be in a church and the owner will come and lock the church while service is going on and drive you out as for me and my house everything that must be put in place in my life to allow me serve God I will put in place if you can make that commitment tonight we have achieved something so far he says the things that pertain unto life and godliness and those things the equipping comes through knowledge 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 there is no shortcut to greatness there is no shortcut to glory sacrifice has always been the non-negotiable condition the sacrifice of your commitment your life your resources your attention you may not have the best of of atmosphere and environment but there is a determination that superimposes those things for the sake of my generation 
I will present Jesus. Are we blessed? The things that pertain unto life and godliness. There are some of us and it really grieves my heart. As young as we are, condition as we call it, has taken away our focus from God. There are some of us here, early 20s, yet you have to be sending something home. God is calling you into ministry, but the focus is not there. The moment he's speaking, here comes the bills. Here comes the whatever. And you know that your poor aged mother who couldn't go to school, our fathers, many of them largely disobedient and proud people, although they don't have any result. You see that? And they yoke all of that. The average home right now has many relatives waiting for their elder brother to marry because he's the one who will continue the education for them. If all you see is poverty, you are not seeing well. You must see an attack on a generation. If all you see is sickness, you are not seeing well. You must see an attack. Look at the long-term effect of that. A day will come, our men will no longer go to church because they have to work all day on Sunday to add to it. It is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow so by the time the father is not there to raise the child the devil positions somebody who is now employed who now teaches that child if, if, whether the father is a pastor or a bishop is not the issue look at the children of men of God this is a cry and a burden that is boiling in my heart we must redeem not only ourselves but redeem a generation we must start thinking transgenerationally don't say you are too young if the entire scope of your life is just me my marriage my home my this no you must start thinking you see that when koinonia started this young boy seated here was in the loins of prophecy today he's now hearing you will be surprised one day now this small boy you see will be going to secondary school one day you'll be writing jam and you will open your eyes and see that I made a mistake I cannot correct again. Many of us seated here, the reason why our lives are delayed is because we have to pay the price that was made by our parents before we start building our own lives. You've not even started building your own life yet. You are paying a debt you know nothing about. Then when you are 50 and have paid, then you now start your own life it's an attack listen to me very carefully it's an attack an attack on the integrity of god an attack on a generation that can seek god all these revelations that we dish out in the body of christ will soon become useless if we ignore these things because there will be nobody to hear them again all the dimensions of heavens and the stars and the constellations we would talk to ourselves as men of god on stage while everybody runs around everywhere trying to make a living make a living is a cause there are many of our parents is in their deathbed they will confess that i was called to be a prophet to my generation called to be a prophet they would have been at the dimension of Benihim today. Imagine how many destinies would have been changed if they answered the call. But they were hijacked. And they only see the visions in their parlor. God shows them global events and they are there. No grace and influence to effect it. You read about these generals. Some of them can hold one year of prayer. You know, sometimes men of god hold prayer meetings is it not those who have eaten that will come if i hold a prayer meeting five days in a week pastor alpha you're a lecturer except god grants you grace should you can't be effective you are only effective when you have options and that's what satan wants to make sure a whole generation does not have no option no option there is an attack on our generation we must open our eyes and see it this is not just the issue of money 
this is not the issue of influence this is the issue of the destiny of a generation the prophetic destiny the prophets labored in the bible and prophesied about our generation and they died not seeing this now we have come in the scene and many of us are just playing games with our lives doing the same old things that brought pain to us so that our own children will cry I want to serve the Lord not because I'm a preacher I want to serve the Lord because my life was meant to be a revelation of his glory I want to serve the Lord I want to be the one to coach my children not Sunday school son sit down let me teach you the Bible not police station teach my child how to live not a rehab center teach your child or daughter how to live is god speaking to us tonight i'm challenging you there is a serious burden in my heart if we do not arise for our generation let me tell you very soon you will be laboring on your child and the lawless children of another person who is not listening to what i'm saying will be there to become the strongholds we not only must care about our children we must care about our generation one child 90 percent of our children are influenced to be bad they are not bad on their own you are laboring to train them there is another godless man somewhere and they all meet in the same place and cain dominates abel and make our children feel sorry for being christians you look at many of us here you are looking at me now look how ashamed you are if you are in the social sphere now you are in church you are jumping but once you are there are you drinking no i don't drink are you this no you and they look at you oh, what a child this guy his eyes have no and you feel so guilty for loving god and being attention and paying attention to him it's like the in thing now is rebellion you are a man to the degree to which you are stubborn lawless rebellious and proud that's what we are marketed to a generation that is the portrait of a superhero that our children are learning if you must be a superhero be rebellious be a bully be everything but a christian the average young child is not interested in church again again you invite them find out how many teenagers come for koinonia you'll be surprised there are young people there are old people but the teenagers don't come it's not because it's night they stroll around and then go around and do a lot of things and satan comes he wants to capture that generation but in the name of jesus christ there are people who will say no way there are people who will create a spiritual barricade that as the priest of my home no way satan there is no entrance huh that gentleman who was talking about aleko or whatever it is look at now that a time will come your child will be saying mommy we are from benway but what is that you say i settled it already don't worry it was well settled that that discussion just one day i will tell you about the story that once upon a time in our village people don't reach 30 but i stood as an altar and i settled it are we together and one of the deceptions let me begin to build my discussion tonight now one of the deceptions that i think god is granting me grace to connect tonight is what i call the danger of imbalance write it down the danger the catastrophic danger of imbalance it not only matters that we communicate truth it matters that the truth we communicate must be the whole counsel of god everybody say the whole counsel of god the whole counsel of god is a definition of all his intention everything he desires for a people within a time period to know about him represents the whole counsel of god for that dispensation 
and one of the things that you see satan playing out right now is an attempt to use religion as a tool that sponsors imbalance in our quest seeing then that he cannot stop us from having an appetite for god he now begins to sell imbalance to believers and let me tell you something brothers and sisters imbalance is as dangerous as falsehood imbalance is as dangerous as a lie let's examine a few things before i talk about imbalance i shared one time about three great errors that the lord revealed to me in the body of christ if you remember when we were talking about the body of christ let me do a quick recap that the lord began to reveal to me that there were three great errors in the body of christ the first error is found in first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 he said the spirit speaketh expressly the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith we're examining the first error now giving heed to seducing spirits and then the doctrine of devils everyone say the doctrine of devils another word for this is apostasy apostasy a deviation from god's known pattern of operation apostasy the first error that the body of christ has to contend with is the error of apostasy listen to my message the apostate church apostasy a deviation from the truth and also a deviation from god's pattern two things there a deviation from the truth is called apostasy but a deviation from the pattern of communicating that truth is also apostasy even if the information is correct but the spiritual system of transferring it is wrong it is still apostasy are we together in god's dealings with men both the information and the pattern are important not just the information don't just say the most important thing is that i'm healed the most important thing is that i prosper the most important thing is that i get anointed no sir there is a predefined pattern when god looks at you and you are doing business with god what you got is not as important as how it came don't just say i was anointed don't just say i was prosperous don't just say i i got married don't just say i had a child god is obsessed with patterns that if you must host his glory then there must be a formation that must be according to pattern apostasy i teach that there are two dimensions to apostasy number one the communicator of the message himself not being of god that's the first dimension where they're, whether as a man of god as a businessman whoever attempting to communicate anything the plan from the beginning was deception intrinsically the communicator himself is of the devil there is such a possibility in the body of christ and in our environment not just apostate informations apostate people people who are not they were never never of god from the first place are we blessed and then number two the people the communicators of those truths may be genuine but the information they are communicating is a doctrine of demons you can be genuine sincere let me take ministry as a case study you can be a sincere man of god you love god you are not fake but the content of your communication is a doctrine that is not sponsored by the spirit of christ the bible says that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and then doctrines of demons i can be a genuine man of god genuinely anointed by god but because of a system the bible calls seduction are we together now i can deviate from god's way of doing things and now become a communicator i am not fake but my message is not genuine both of these cases can be classified as apostasy so that's the first error the second error that i teach 
is the error of individualism also the error of indifference write it down indifference what we call i don't care attitude right individualism we don't think kingdom we don't think generational we think me so if a jimmy's leg is having a problem provided it has not affected me it's none of my business this is where many many men of god many many of we pastors pentecostals especially have missed it we have missed it big time in this area we are so individual individualistic we don't care about what is happening to the body provided my church provided my life is immune for, from it to hell with the body are we together yeah so if the danger has not come to meet me it doesn't matter if an arm robber comes to steal in a pastor's church nearby it was not my church it was not my member my kingdom financier was not robbed so pastor may god bless you if someone dies provided he's not a member of my church it's amazing how we leaders mentor people to deliberately select being in the body is not enough you must be associated with me to be able to enjoy certain benevolence that is meant for the body it's a poisonous spirit the error of indifference the error of individualism when god begins to build his army his system of operation is that he takes us beyond individualism and connects us as an organism if your leg is having pains your head can pain you because of the leg is that true um we're returning back from kano and we stopped at a filling station to get fuel and one guy was marketing a funny product you know these guys that market something at the filling station and he said um there's a the drug or the lotion whatever it is is for teeth <laughs> but you rub it on your leg yes he said you don't have to rub the thing on your teeth you just rub it on your leg now that, that's a body consciousness at least i didn't buy it but he taught me that the leg is related to the teeth because we have been taught to apply drugs only where it hurts and leave other parts and he said no no let me show you another formula you can apply it in the leg but it can touch the teeth that means i can pray from zaria and God can preserve Kenneth Copeland because it is the body. I can hear that there is an attack on a man of God, and not say, after all, they don't listen. They say, no, no, Lord, this whatever it is, he's part of the body, his integrity is our integrity as the body. And Lord, arise in your mercy for your namesake. But we keep becoming individualistic. You ask believers, what is your pride? Our pride, let me tell you the pride of our generation. Three things. One, revelation, rema. The extent to which you bring an exegesis of the truth. And nothing is wrong with that, right? Greek words, Hebrew words, play around with all kinds of concordances and then dish out mysteries. We love that. Two, prophecy. If I give you a prophetic word, which is not bad. Three, anointing. And our definition of anointing is fall down, not result. Fall down. Just make sure you hit that bench as a testament that the communicator is having something. And so this erroneously become the pivot of our pursuit. We are looking for revelation. We are looking for an ability to communicate, which is, 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 is to be desired. And then we're looking for an anointing to make sure when we step into a meeting, people just fall up and down. And when these things happen, we believe that we are fine. And we don't extend the scope of our alliance to God to extend beyond our personal comfort to think body. In terms of administration, you know, I love Koinonia. Thank God this is where he's planted me. But in terms of the health of the church, I am passionately concerned about the body of christ just follow me we are going somewhere tonight are we blessed the third error that i teach um, i have taught this already so 
is what I call exaggerated confrontation of error. This is where it even gets sad. Exaggerated confrontation of error. That means that error that is attempted to be corrected but not from a standpoint of love. Error that is attempting to be corrected from a standpoint of intrinsic intimidation by the supposed corrector. Now listen very carefully. You see, please come, Ejimin. Can I use you? Amen. When you see Ejimin, one word you think wealth, finances, right? Well, anointing too. Anointing. At least last week you saw it. Praise God. Now watch this. Chances are that if God has called Ejimin to represent um, that dimension of maybe the Holy Spirit and finances to people and I have a bias with finances either as a result of men, my mentality or my frustrations two of them can cause the same thing I can have a poor mentality or I can be secretly frustrated now if there is an imbalance in a Jimmy's life or his way of communicating that chances are that because I was angry since even before the imbalance came now that I have found a scapegoat of a lapse in him, I will correct it in a way you know it was paining me. This is not, the point is not to correct. The point is to vent out pain. There is a big, this exaggerated confrontation is even more deadly than error itself. I once had a, well, somewhere a man of God was talking about those who were saying they teach people how to pray in tongues somewhere, you know, trying to be sarcastic. That man himself does not pray in tongues. He doesn't believe it. But there is no, there's no legitimate case for him to fight it. So he now routes through a church or a man of God that he sees teaching people. He now uses that one exception. This is how you know error is exaggerated. A man of God or a businessman or whatever picks one single error and robs it off beyond the proportion of his relevance. You know that the, the goal is not to sponsor correction. The goal is to help manage intimidation. Are we together now? So Ejimi talks about money and all of that and all of a sudden I'm there in my frustration and I turn and I say be careful all these guys that just talk about money all the time the truth of the matter is that I may be right in speaking about that unique situation but it's not coming from a standpoint that wants to contribute to the health of the body I am only communicating because I am intrinsically frustrated thank you sir are we blessed some of us here seated looking at me have become victims even of this it tells on how we hate anointed people it tells on how we hate wealthy people are we together now yes and so we try everybody right now is in the ministry of correction that is the latest anointing that is going all around everybody is correcting everybody everybody once you have access to a mic and you can talk and people can hear you everybody is correcting everybody let me tell you this the greatest danger in the church now is not error the greatest danger is imbalance and this imbalance has come from this third point this is where i want to build my case tonight so pay attention so that you find out whether you are part of it and trust god to help you tonight everybody shout imbalance, imbalance. there is something about the limitation of pentecostals that our orthodox brothers and sisters capitalize on and use it as the basis why you should not be open to the things of the holy spirit then there are things that the pentecostals use as their excuse for thinking an orthodox lifestyle is too mean and basic and all of that and all of them may have some sense of justification but the truth is that there is an inner anger for one another just waiting for a legitimate excuse are we together now yeah whether it is an issue of marriage or finances or fidelity or issues that have to do with um, administration and leadership whatever it is how you know that correction is not coming from a sincere point is the exaggeration exaggeration i always say you use a, a hammer to kill a fly 
a simple tap on that fly it would die but when you use hammer you were angry it's not about the fly the fly just happens to be what the hammer is hitting obviously that hammer was not designed for the fly it's just that the fly got in the way of the hammer and boy will that hammer hit the fly there is a spirit of pride listen carefully it looks like it's coming from god but i'm exposing lucifer there is something satan is doing in the especially among we men of god that god has privileged to have access to revelation and anointing and a dimension of the miraculous pride is gradually eating us up because we believe that because of the little results we have we have authority by ourselves to correct everybody and everything every man of god is trying to show what another man is doing wrong everyone is trying to show that this is wrong why are you praying like this the other one will say you too why are you keeping quiet when you are praying the other one say what is the meaning of warfare the other one say keep waiting demons are coming see let me tell you this let me tell you this listen very carefully listen carefully if we do not trust god to rise up and correct these imbalances we are going to authorize satan to destroy us god's goal is not to produce koinonia in all the earth if god gives me an assignment and says apostle through you the gospel will get to the ends of the earth he was talking to all the people who will come out spiritually and prophetically through my loins through there are ministries that will come out of me they are an extension of that instruction the idea is not to turn every believer in nigeria into koinonia it's a failed project from day one and anybody who knows god will never be part of that failed agenda so god is not glorified when koinonia has more members god is glorified when the kingdom advances listen very carefully because right now the entire scope of our soul winning agenda is sometimes is even sheep stealing i say this because i love the body you are sitting quietly taking fresh air someone comes to preach to you you say okay i'm already born again as soon as he's leaving you another person is coming say your brother just be said doesn't matter you just listen have you have you been given um, um are you are you aware of our church services you say yes you say come and the next time you see him look how people feel guilty and blackmailed because i invited you for koinonia you didn't come and you make it look like you are the worst sinner in the whole world you are just because you did not come that's not salvation that's pressure like banks give people target bring this by this month we have begun to propose some of those campaigns and we must be careful kingdom advancement is not the advancement of a name of a church is the advancement of the agenda of god in the hearts of men and across the spheres now it 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 is important that the individual ministries do their best to be the the platforms for people to be saved and equipped but that's not the idea there are people it's one of the reasons why pastors never invite people to their pulpit because someone comes and in two minutes before he preaches he has said almost 90 things about his church and sometimes some can even be sarcastic to downplay the church that now invited them you hear about people who go for conferences and before you know it while in that conference he saw a keyboard is playing well he saw a worshiper singing well and the man of god will collect their numbers travel back and now call them and begin to indoctrinate them you are, are you you sound too good your pastor doesn't deserve you come and join a moving train we say and then the member now leaves his church to join the supposed moving train and then we make it look like god is only with us it is pride let me repeat the idea that makes you believe you are the only representation of god in a territory is pride the day koinonia believes that we are the only and even the ultimate representation of god in this region is a sign that error has already eaten beginning from me to everyone may god forbid it are we together now yes this is the basis behind the show of superiority from men of god to churches to business people imbalance imbalance the the inability to construct the truth of god's word so that it becomes edifying to you and to the body now let me teach you something the dealings of god 
has a side effect watch this i've shared it here that if god calls me into the healing ministry watch this because of the character and the nature of my training are we together it will require a level of meticulousness in a dimension chances are that because of my concentration i will trivialize other matters of the kingdom too they are important but because they were not captured in my training process i will assume that they are not important are we together now so when i now come up this is the healing evangelist evangelist joshua selman and i'm healing and when i see somebody in another dimension is the reason why we reject certain ministries in the body because we have not been trained you see young people come and dance and while they are dancing someone is just waving his head and say what a wasted generation simply because the way god trained you that was not captured as part of the experience of the training so you can downplay it then to mean that these are not serious things when people come to church they sleep and snore every other time until the man of god comes in now the uh, god has been moving since praise and worship you were not taught to respect it a time of worship people are rolling on the floor god is speaking to people someone has received this breakthrough already but you were trained that until someone stands on stage so if the man of god now comes and starts rolling you say what kind of church is this you don't preach here I want you to listen to me very carefully why am i teaching you this because god is helping us to be a blessing to many others are we together in balance there are many people in the body of christ whose ministries have been strangled no room to find expression simply because the man of god who founded the church the experience of allowing those ministries to find expression were not captured in his dealings with god and so because of that the moment you see any other ministry that is outside your scope of understanding you fight it you abuse it you can call it of the devil you blackmail it amazing do you know why god limits you like this so that it is in partnership with other dimensions in the body you see how complete the body is you see that so if god has granted me grace to walk in a dimension of the teaching ministry and i don't walk say in miracles and sam come sam sam walks in the miraculous it is my identifying with sam it now supplies a dimension of god that i wouldn't have seen are we together now for sam the way god dealt with him it was just vision and power so when sam comes to the stage he said look stop all this grammar of bible study let's go straight to wheelchairs he is also in error he does not know it's just that his own nature of ministry is what is desired by the masses they want power immediately so chances are that you will see that in sam's church you receive miracles but there's no spiritual growth because the system he just the it was the god almighty god that was the revelation that was given to him for you the rabbi of rabbis that's what you got so you can sit down and teach one series for one year and then i reject you i say sam all it takes is mental transformation not power people need to be leaders and then sam is saying continue there you are watching your members crying what they need is power both of them god is with them but they believe god is not with each other you see that mistake me please can i use you again please come and then all of a sudden this guy comes he's a leader he's an entrepreneur he's a businessman and i said look all these your business principles i laid hands on somebody a millionaire's child without knowing any finance thing and all of a sudden they gave me an estate all these things you are trying to teach people is nonsense teach them power and estate comes and the members ignore this principle and they find out that estate didn't come after 10 years the man is married now the preacher got an estate but the hearer didn't get it are we together now all three of them now chances are that a jimmy may be angry and say look at this guy power 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 let's see whether you ever rise to the government this is the fight
now everybody let me tell you what satan does when satan wants to destroy you if he knows there's nothing he can do about your anointing he covers you from seeing the body so the only thing you see is your church and your performance and based on that he will now use supposed loyal sons to keep you in that state the power when you came into that meeting you know i like you you don't talk anything no verse said bible was not open straight to power and he said you mean it you were impressed say yes now this is a group here hiding themselves and shortchanging themselves in imbalance yet they will believe that because the man sees visions he has the entire scope of what god is doing and then he will have the effrontery to now indoctrinate his members into believing that anytime you see our teacher man or anytime you see our businessman ignore them just get power and rest and that's what is happening so we have a congregation of people today who have no regard for the word of god turn to philippians that you see them just snoring once you hear so ah, 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 you see, that's right this is i mean we are, we are in church now that's all people want and while that shout is going on the business guy says when you finish go and pay your rent shout roll on the floor your rent is the, the tribute collectors are there and you can't say he's not godly because he's rich and he's with part of the money your church was built so the pastor can't shout at him you know what it will mean to you look at the confusion now let me tell you no one of these three will admit they are incomplete it is one of the hardest things for men of god to do to admit that regardless of what they have seen they need to spread their horizon beyond the scope that was revealed to them to see the body it is in the seven lampstands that the fullness of christ was seen the seven lampstands i had a voice when i turned i didn't see christ i saw the complete church with all the dimensions when i saw the complete church i saw the fullness of christ if i had seen two of them i would see only his hands and think god is a hand then i see another church and see his eyes and think all to god is prophecy then i see another church and i see his legs and i think all in life is progress but the complete church revealed the complete christ is god speaking to us this is a revelation that will bless you beyond imagination and so Ejimi now organizes a seminar to correct people and gathers all his members and say look all those power guys don't mind them all those revelation guys the bible says money answer it that's the members answering him now all things whereas there's somebody dying in the hospital with cancer a millionaire that money cannot do anything about are we together now answer it all things and if any of his member dare ask him and say sir why don't the power of god work you say are you stupid am i not rich is that not power you see that person becomes a disloyal person imagine how many of us are called disloyal for asking questions pastor we don't pray in tongues in this church but is it all right don't ever ask me i am this i am that don't go and join all those riffraff roadside prophets man of god is it okay if i meet a man of god to hear the counsel of god no the word is everything just focus on the word don't let any roadside prophet come and deceive you whereas that man is in utter confusion and five minutes of this ministry can correct 10 years in his life many members would have moved forward if only they went to where the eyes of god is but they refuse because the pastor has the hand of god and they keep seeing the hand of god the hand does not see it only holds what the eyes see listen to me because many of us are starting ministry now some of us are in ministry some of us are leaders and already we are if we are not careful we're get, we're getting into big error we've been mentored by all kinds of people that's why i see as a man of god if god gives you any influence over people go and pray and say lord let me not raise a people that will be defiant from your patterns i say it with all humility not to blow the trumpet of this ministry but by his grace 
koinonia has been part and parcel of the building and the lifting of many ministries as a person we have account numbers of many ministries that i'm not even connected to they are not my friends we could just hear that there is a program somewhere and say look we have to do something the other day i think dunamis came and they were opening their branch here our protocol department all of them they said no, let's go and serve i said quickly make sure that anything that is needed let it be given my koinonia i am apostle i'm the owner of zaria god gave it to me it's my property no this is why men of god don't sleep this is why men of god yoke members with covenant swear that you will stay why will i swear why you change clothes why why shouldn't i i mean I, I should swear that what no or we now make it prophetic god told me the day you leave me or the day you do this there is a cause where this is a lie there is no cause coming anywhere anywhere just because someone is falling down when we are saying it does not mean it's a lie there is no cause anywhere even god you can choose to leave him I said before you life and death why will somebody come and threaten you let me tell you the truth i love the body but it's a lie it's our insecurity it's not the holy spirit don't blame the, the holy spirit has no part in this people stay when they are changed people don't just become loyal to a leader foolishly don't you know that in the kingdom you keep things by leaving them hmm whosoever keeps his life shall lose it whosoever keeps his members shall whosoever tries to keep money shall but whosoever loses it for my sake are you learning something thank you sir thank you. exaggeration now let me teach you something It is true that there are erroneous things in the body but hear me correcting the body of Christ is a ministry you have to be called into it the same way God calls someone to be a prophet you are called is part of the apostolic and prophetic system of governance and it's not just every apostle and every prophet that is a corrector even among apostles and prophets there are rankings and dimensions not just because you're an apostle or prophet or pastor or teacher i am pastor so 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 i read in harvard i am no no sir we are misleading people there are spiritual conditions for you to have the authorization to be shown the weakness of the body let me tell you this you can observe what you think is the weakness of the body but god can show you what is the weakness of the body there is a condition to end that level of intimacy from God where God can show you this is where my body is weak correct it hey Jimmy if your son or your wife feels down do you just walk to anybody on the street and say my wife my son has a little rashes here or my son has knife caught him here and you open your son's cloth do you do that you go to an authorized place called a hospital and even in that hospital you enter a room and if need be in that room you can pull up and you are comfortable because it is the authorized place where that matter is addressed if you pull your son's cloth on the road somebody will look at you and say man of god what is going on but if you pull your son's cloth there it is the place not every place is a place of correction let me tell you this there is a condition you must sustain as a man of God to be afforded the opportunity to contribute in correcting the body. And that element is not prayer. That element is not fasting. That element is not even revelation. That element is genuine love for the body. Not for God, for the body. You will never be given access to correct the body until you love that body. You can't correct the body from the standpoint of hatred. You can't correct the body from the standpoint of resentment. You can't correct the body from the standpoint of error. It's impossible. If I hate keyboards and this guy is making a mistake, I don't have the right to correct him. Because my correction will meet with a bias that has been there. Let me tell you this. I travel a lot and you can ask those who travel with me, I go to all kinds of churches and they do all kinds of things. 
sometimes i am surprised when i see what people do in many churches my mind i say if i catch my child doing that kind of thing we will talk oh, we will talk seriously yet i am able to have the accommodation let me give you a secret if you look at christ in every church you will find him mm. let me repeat they went to a tomb where there was no life and found jesus there a tomb where there is no life yet when the woman kept looking she saw jesus in that tomb is it in your bible the living have nothing to do in the grave but a woman was determined to see jesus and although her location was the grave she still saw him so that dead church that you think your pastor is as dead as whatever the day your heart is humble and you know that the builder is not a man of god but the spirit of god one day in the confusion of your pastor he will say something that is the secret for your lifting now we who god has helped with little revelation little grace here this is what we do when we go to church we hold our bibles arrogantly and sit at the back we don't sit in front because the man doesn't have anything to say and then he comes as usual turn to the book of this and that and god so loved the world are you aware of this and someone is just nodding and say oh god i i would have listened to a message that would bless me what is this guy doing and wasting my time and you think what you are demonstrating is superiority because of spiritual level it's a sign you have fallen for the deception yourself because the higher you rise in the kingdom the more you know we are products of his mercy so while you stand there and watch the man of god ramble and make mistakes and quote wrong scriptures in the midst of it you what if you really look at jesus the holy spirit will start speaking to you and say truly there is this treasure in earthen vessels you say this man may not be so accurate yet he has been pastoring for 15 years and the members didn't leave him while you who has revelation is struggling to have 10 members and the god starts revealing to you you are now seeing jesus in that weak man that there is a grace upon this man one day in the midst of his confusion he would tell you t.l osborne came to lagos and he was part of those who were helping to hold his bag and t.l osborne touched his head he said that's where he got it pastor i know you don't preach well but i just found out you are carrying something i need touch me and the man said no nah, you who preach very well i was impressed he said pastor you were impressed with my revelation but what i need now is what you carry there is no man of god that comes to my life that i cannot receive anything from no that's why i see some of our fathers i don't sit down and say oh revelation revelation there are places i travel to minister i already know that they may not have that level of word content but when it's time to pray i'm humble please reveal it to me many of us are about to lose it because if it is not a company of people who have your level of spiritual enlightenment they don't matter to you you will miss something because the greatest treasures you need will be hidden in that reverend that cannot speak english that reverend that is it one day god will tell you go for the capro missions program i say lord me me that i'm looking to be young Gicho. what is capro how many will forest to go and win with soul when i can snap my finger i've learned the law of exemption and god says break your pride and follow them to that village you follow them to that village and you sit down and see a house a reverend who has not been sick once for 22 years god will say this is why i brought you kneel down let him release something upon you before you carry your pride and be lying that you have not taken drugs for 30 years and die two weeks later out kneel down let that man give you something genuine let me tell you this one of the secrets of my spiritual growth is my open-heartedness towards the body not necessarily my perfection in pursuing god my open-heartedness that does not mean you jump at error no no when i discern grace i realize there is something this woman never built a house but she never went hungry she would tell you every pastor that rose up came and stayed in her house there is something you should receive there we are about losing that's why many of us do you know let me tell you one of the things with error once you stay in a dimension and don't open up to the body your area of strength will magnify 
and your area of lapse will become clear it will be clear that only your hands are growing but your head is remaining small it will be clear that you are growing in prosperity but your knowledge of god is diminishing it will be clear that you are growing in the miraculous but you don't have a heart for god by the grace of god i want to raise the balanced people that they can look at your life and see that the matters of life when they come to passion for god you are there prayer you are there not because i have all but i know how to bring all i travel somewhere and i see a man of god ah apostle you are the great man and your messages while he's saying that i'm observing lord what do i see this man has more character than me i may pray more than him but if we stand here and somebody is about to kill us i would deny christ and run but this guy will stay and die that means there is a grace for courage that i need our pastor is coming from adam our state i had the privilege they invited me i've been there three times now sir yes three times and when boko haram struck 2014 sir am i right and destroyed those people in mubi it was that meeting that was like um it was a starting point for the churches again while i preached and saw the way they honored me i asked myself a question i said with all this mouth i make if i was part of the pastors that stood before boko haram will i denounce christ don't be too fast say me uh -uh. now there are protocol people protecting you but there a pastor can go out in the morning and say wife if you don't see me just know that i died for christ that means there is a grace you say the man is not praying in tongues but you who is praying in tongues you run away at a sound on your zinc this guy is standing and watching a gun do you think it is normal no by faith abel offered it takes something to offer yourself now a wise man will meet that man of god and say sir you may not have the grace to preach and heal like me but i see that there is a dimension revealed to you if i stay where i am i will raise sons that can pray but never stand for christ i need that grace i admit i don't have it i admit that dimension has been opened up to you i humble myself sir it does not make you small this is what we will never do as men of god our pride will never allow us we will hide and listen to tapes in the secret Hi. and some of you are already learning those kinds of things you never see yourselves and celebrate yourself that guy is pastor femi pastor femi of where rema which which rema ah please i came into this town and i'm a man of god already who is this pastor of where under who no if you don't change from this a generation will show that there was a lapse of god that we did not tap into don't ever let anybody say the prophetic is not useful just because you found the word of god don't call every prophet a reef raff and a roadside prophet there is a dimension only prophecy can birth no amount of study can bring you there there is a dimension only mental transformation can bring so don't insult mensa otabel and say oh these guys are just uh -uh. there is a dimension only joyce mayer can bring there is a dimension only benny Hinn can bring there is a dimension only dr lukoya can bring there is a dimension only papa kumui can bring you ignore Dr. Lukoya and demons kill you in your pride. <laughs> you die the death of a fool before your time. A man who was the best in molecular genetics and left it. Left something, went to school abroad. Exceptional in molecular genetics. And came and humbled himself to carry the cross. And all of a sudden you see him. And just say, what is all these things? We even mimic them in laughter and the demons say thank god for such a foolish generation are we together then you see a man of god papa Iya deboe can just stand i'm mentioning names because i'm saying positive things about them and because their fathers indeed may god bless you you're like i i need
and you listen to td jakes and while he's moving keyboards are playing and moving and you just came out of seven days dry retreat like a skeleton almost dying i said what is this guy saying is it just to say you will come out that you can't say in one minute and while you are there in your pride slaves left africa and went to us god picks a man out of them and makes one of the best preachers you didn't ask how it happened when they traced his origin they found out he's Igbo, a nigerian are you learning who have you resented because of imbalance some of us right now we love god but we have been we have educated ourselves into believing that some people in the body are not relevant for our growth i'm telling you you are already in imbalance especially if you're a man of god if you are hearing me and you're in this mistake change now change quickly never go back home and put men of god and keep bringing them one by one oh this one doesn't have fire this one he doesn't have this ah this one i like his suit i like this one i like his this be careful There is one Lord, there is one faith, there is one baptism. There is something that Joshua Selman will never see, even if I fast for 400 days. It will not be covered by a demon, it will be covered by God himself, so that I will need a Jimmy to see it. There is something a Jimmy will never see until he looks at a pastor toby or a pastor here in adamawa there was something about god i learned when i went to adamawa sir I, I say it i have never seen a level of generosity from people like that women some of them old enough to be my mother and you see i'll say it till today when i go to movie they see me they start jumping daddy oh yo yo people with doctors lecturers with such depth of humility i don't know if i can do that for anybody and while they do those things i don't sit down with my pride and say wow you mean they acknowledge me this far i sit down and say lord let this grace for humility that will be upon a man of 50 years before i now die in the next 10 years because of pride do you see that god has put the remedy for our fall in the body but because we could not tap into it imbalance is a destroyer there are many families today that have no business being in poverty if they would listen to those carrying the graces it's amazing that what we resent is what we secretly desire oh i prophesy your name is divine ah man of god and so yeah, all these riffraffs divine whereas one day he tried to he said what's your name are you gabriel he said no i'm a jimmy and just ah he said no he he wanted it secretly he was just too hot and then he said no what is not all about prophesying you must be careful most of the things people criticize they test it secretly when it becomes too hot they live as if nothing happened then they create a theology can one person be praying for 12 hours life is not all about prayer that man has tried to pray secretly he, he thought it's just by energy the grace is not there so he sees someone fasting dry two weeks there's a man i know in abuja i don't know anybody that fasts on earth like him one day maybe when we are doing something in koinonia and he honors me a lot i'm sure i'll bring him one day to pray that man can go for um, no food, no water, not that you drink water in the night. Dry. Ah. If that man prays, even standing close to him, you will feel as if they are electrocuting you. I literally mean it. There is no deliverance case that gets to that man that goes back free. Papa. Before, I'm, no, I'm serious. I really am serious. That guy has stretched this body and brought it under subjection the kind of power that is in that man's voice yet he will come to me like this and still kneel down sometimes i'm tempted to say stand up oh you better stand up and lay hands on me how you know you love the body is your outspoken celebration of the uniqueness in it 
the moment you are ashamed to celebrate the uniqueness in the body is a sign that something about it is intimidating you oh a beautiful song look how wonderful this guy's voice was when he was singing i was just listening to his speech i said who dash monkey banana let me try that thing i was in a belkuta my voice ceased just because it was raining yes someone shouting Are we together now don't forget for those of you who know a little about me i was once a music director i'm not naive musically but now i carry my pride and try what he's doing and that's the end of it there's no coin on here for one month so i can choose to respond to my frustration by trivializing him and say it's not all about pitch the most important is the message no sir we need the pitch too otherwise recite a poem don't sing <laughs> it's not all about prosperity okay carry everything in your house and give to the poor the blogger who is talking is using an ipad that he bought two hundred and fifty thousand, and say it's not all about prosperity are we together it's not all about money and there is a hot meal in your kitchen waiting for you and there are poor people there it's not all about prayer yet you have intercessors in your church praying for you so you know prayer is important it's not all about fasting yet people are fasting for you it's not all about prophecy yet you call and say uh, promise just find out whether god is saying something around this i'm agreeing with you it's just that i am not i had something i just want to i won't tell you because i is bright just say help me sir i'm trusting to hear something I'm a man of God too, but there's, there's this, the vision is hazy. I'm not seeing very well. What is there? Does it mean you are not born again? A hazy vision is something that happens to everybody. Jesus touched people many times. Are we together? You must reject imbalance. The imbalance that comes in approaching the body the imbalance in camping around a dimension as revealed to you and ignoring the usefulness of what god has distributed in the body you must sustain a fortitude tonight to embrace there is something i've learned from our children that no adult can teach me no matter how simple and well behaved you are these children have taught something they have taught me faith they have taught me courage some of do you know some of these little children are in prayer department am i right prayer department they don't miss it so if a child can be in a prayer department what excuse does an adult have Pray. you tell them i'll buy you sweets they won't forget they come back and say uncle my sweet they never ask whether you have the money because they expect you to be adult enough to check whether you have money first before speaking now you learn that thing and when god says i know the thoughts i think towards you like a child you don't start asking lord where will the uncle come from no. you stop learning when pride close your eyes may humility open it tonight so that you can see what is going on you see that's why many of us don't know what god is doing in the body we only knew what he was doing with us in our little corners and we get up and say revival is coming when it has started since because you were not there the virgins had oil but they could not go to the market there were others who had in abundance but the foolish virgins did not get more a time came their own finished they had their own oil but they would have gone to get some more the same way joshua selman has anointing but i need to get some more from benihin i need to get some more from kenneth copeland I need to get some more because the challenges in the future at this my level of anointing will eat me as if i'm not anointed so i will not allow the pride because of the level god has brought me now believe that i can stand benny Hinn's kind of challenge so i need the grace so i will listen when pastors come to me for counseling there's nothing that humbles me more than that and some of those people are anointed people Dr. Luca and Dr. John sent me a text and they said, Apostle, we are coming over. And I said, oh dear, I love you. When I was told, I was told that since around 4 a.m. or so, this is the assistant chaplain. He's also a man of God himself. 
but he came here since around four to sit down what is there about a man the veil has been torn and it tears and you do you don't enter the veil has been torn you are still poor the veil has been torn you are still this whereas you can humble yourself and say every house is built by some man but god is the builder of it all there are people who must assist you in life otherwise you will never rise it's not pride One of the things that God helps me to do at the beginning of the year, I go and our daddy escorts me to go and meet the pastors of CGC. I go and greet them and get down on my knees. With just a little, I honor them and I get down on my knees and the pastor and his wife, they speak and prophesy over me and lay hands over me. I won't come and say, see crowd. No, there is a grace. If I were their age, I don't know if I would submit to a small boy like this. So Lord, help me before this pride that comes with middle belt and kill me. Where we don't have anything yet, we make a lot of noise. Lord, deliver me from it. So that I can look at one of these, our little ones tomorrow and say, Apostle, I saw myself laying hands on you and I said, do it. The girl is shaking. I said, I said, do it. And she lays hands and from that day you enter a dimension of revelation you can sit and say god forbid transfer it to another adult let me receive it from the adult and god says you will never get it that way are you blessed yes imbalance is dangerous is why we have not seen i remember years ago i tried to pray for a woman i think somewhere in abuja also i can't remember I prayed for that woman I have never felt helpless before a sick body like that day you know how you pray and you know that there's no hope of that prayer being answered under that condition I couldn't feel any anointing the woman just stood there it saddened me I encouraged this woman koinonia no koinonia had not even started it was just about to start I said Lord how can a man be this helpless I came in your name bragged in your name if you see the scriptures i was quoting quoted this 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 the kingdom of god is not in word but in power and all that there was no power yet the bible say in my name i did it it didn't work that meant i need to submit to somebody who has the eyes of the spirit to tell me what the bible was saying because it's clear i did not get what jesus was saying are we together and yet i watched benny him climb up the stage before he raised one worship song 40 wheelchairs 40 brothers and sisters this thing is not magic if you don't have it find it because it is there if it is not in your life it is not missing it only requires the humility to search you desire the prophetic and it's not in your life it is available it will take your humility to search man of God I have prayed but I know God has directed me but I do not know whether or not God is calling me to Kogi or Lafia and the moment you are talking the Lord just tells the person Lafia and he says the Lord is sending you to Lafia in one minute the word of the Lord came because of your humility to align instead of fasting for 100 days and you hear Lafia just when you round up the fast you hear a quiet bomb and as soon as you round up the fast you hear just you see that whatever is a limitation to you we are going to pray please listen carefully whatever is a limitation to you the word limitation is relative everything you need is already resident within the body if your life is poor god did not make it so you ignore the grace that conveys that possibility if your prayer life is dead it is not god's will you have ignored the envoys that he has put that supply of the spirit upon if you do not have access to the deep things of god it is because pride has made you to take away the relevance the necessity of the word of god i look at people and with all humility i know they have stopped growing they've not backslidden but they put a peg around their lives simply because they cannot open their door 
and say oh god bring in other dimensions that are not here they stood there and you know that's not their best that's not their greatest hallelujah praise the lord Tonight is my prayer that God will deliver us from the error of imbalance. That we will escape the danger of imbalance. 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 That we will not trivialize the dimension of God that is required for our lives. All dimensions cannot be in your life. But all dimensions can work for you. Listen carefully all dimensions cannot be in your life it's impossible but all dimensions available can work for you meaning that it's impossible for me to be as prophetic as ever as apostolic as ever as evangelical as ever no there is the limitation that god puts i can't be benny Hinn and kenneth copeland and Joyce Mayer and T.D. Jakes and Bishop Oyedepo and Papa Ia Adeboye at the same time with the same degree. No, sir. I have to be one of them. But I can enjoy what is on Bishop Oyedepo, Papa Adeboye, Benny Hinn. I can enjoy it through the humility of participations, the word koinonia, sharing together, the ability to extend your hand through humility to say, sir, I have seen the dimension of God's grace in your life. And I'm open to let it work in my life. And honor becomes the key to that access. And all of a sudden you find out that what was a mountain to you is trivialized under a certain kind of grace. People have prayed for me in my life. I have been a product of many people's prayers. I have been surprised at how powerful the body of Christ is. I have prayed for people and sometimes i look at what they call a mountain and i am shocked because i know how easy that problem can be solved and in my mind sometimes i wonder where, where were you why did you allow it to get this bad before locating the body for help are we together there is something tonight that you need in god for you to move to the next level that is not yet in your life but it is available and for many of us the error of imbalance has made you to think that because your life cannot produce it it cannot be produced so you just say if it was for me god would have brought it directly through me and just because it didn't come directly through me then it's not important please hear me prosperity is as important as healing healing is as important as prayer prayer is as important as visions are we together salvation is as important as mental transformation mental transformation is as important as your health and hygiene stay in your area of calling but do not allow imbalance make you trivialize what god is doing God is not only walking in Koinonia. Brothers and sisters, God is walking across Zaria. God is walking across the north. God is walking across Africa. It is only a privilege for us to be at the level that we are now in his program. It's a privilege for us to be contributors. That's the word. Contributors. That you can come and listen to the supply of the dimension that God has put in me. Of course, administratively speaking, it is it is important for you to be able to stay in your area of whatever ministry or whatever church you are part of for the purpose of administration and leadership however let me tell you the truth any man that indoctrinates you into camping around him alone and all the dimension revealed to him whether in the name of mentorship or fatherhood has deceived you if i am your spiritual father it means you have taken you have come under my authority but it does not mean that i represent all of christ to you i represent the voice and the speakings of god in your life but i must have the flexibility to allow you grow and this is my goal god knows i get materials that have nothing to do with me i send it to people in the ministry listen listen to it this will bless you it blessed me so much 
Are we blessed? We are going to pray. Father, my, my father would have prospered if only he listened to that prosperity preacher. He said, prosperity preachers are rubbish. Now my father is an evangelist who has lost his house, although a preacher of the gospel. Lord, my arrogant business partner father would have been such a man of prayer and he would have seen that accident before it happened but he ignored it because he thought everything was money and he neglected the place of prayer and evil came sat in our house and there was no eyes to see and nobody to manipulate things from the realm of the spirit and we died that death was not caused by god the refusal to tap from what god is doing closed your eyes until there was destruction there's nobody to help me in school no if only you listen to the person that god used to say go to this church you would have found somebody who would have sponsored you it is your refusal because you never believe that there are people kind enough to sponsor you without strings attached and your imbalance did not allow you to tap into that dimension tonight i want us to start with a prayer of repentance lord forgive me for trivializing your other dimensions scattered across the body thank you for what you have shown me as a man of god lord forgive me for insulting business people forgive me for calling prosperous people wasters of your time lord i forgive me for calling prayer warriors hungry noisemakers forgive me for insulting deliverance forgive me for insulting the prophetic i ask for mercy for insulting people who transform the mind in the place of prayer forgive me for thinking those who are the the personal development experts are useless to your agenda forgive my ignorance that has come through imbalance this imbalance has cheated me and my life has lost the flavor that should be go ahead and pray the reason why I am not blessing all things is because imbalance has pegged a dimension of God from my life. If I opened up myself to the healing ministry, I would have carried that healing anointing. My church would have been a church that experiences healing. I rejected the prophetic and now confusion is destroying my life. Lord, I ask for mercy. I've exaggerated the prophetic and I've left the word of God. Now I've gotten into witchcraft and error. I've become a slave to prophets. Have mercy on me. And let me return back to the word. I've been so obsessed with power. And signs and wonders. That there is no place for spiritual growth. Being grounded and established in the word of God. All I look for now is power. Lord have mercy. Take away that imbalance from my life outside make sure you are praying everywhere pray the error the danger the destructive calamity that imbalance brings lord i've ignored the anointing and all i do is just an empty theological bible study without the power without grace so my church my business my family has no genuine anointing Lord, I open up myself to the dimension of authentic power. Lord, I rejected excellence. I thought it was just about prayer and Bible study and healing the sick. I rejected excellence. Now all my TV programs are not accepted because they don't match a level of excellence. I have wasted resources because of lack of excellence. There are certain partners and helpers that excellence would have drawn to my ministry but lack of excellence threw, threw them away I received that dimension pray hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray there is not maybe not in koinonia but I observe the body of Christ and I see a widespread of prayerlessness people don't pray again pray for me that's the language of people 
Oh, you are going for, please pray for us. So, and people don't pray. You know why? Because in a bid to balance this, we have insulted every prayer warrior, insulted anyone, any church that prays. These are just noise makers. It's all about money. And we have found out that there is no sensitivity in the body, no discernment. People don't pray. People don't travel. Gone are the days when you see people lock themselves somewhere and cry to the God of heaven. Now people fast and all, they just want cheap things. Oh man of God, let me sow a seed. Just touch my head. There are some things, it's not just by impartation. You must stay and cry upon the horns of the altar till something falls upon you from heaven. We are going to pray one prayer and say, Lord, what dimension is needed for my next level? Open me up unto it, O God. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, if it is the prophetic that will take me to my next season, then I open up my spirit for it. If it's the miraculous that will take me to the next dimension, if it's a healthy, mental, transformed mind, Lord, I receive that dimension. I will pray in please. If it's a restoration of fire upon my altar that is the requirement for the next dimension, I receive it. If it's the knowledge of administration and excellence that I need, Lord, balance my life. Lord, balance my life. Balance my church. Balance my business. Balance my understanding. Balance my life. Balance my life. Take away from me the sarcasm for prophets. Take away the sarcasm for Bible study. Take away the sarcasm for prayer. Take away the sarcasm for diligence. And Lord, let me incorporate these dimensions as coming from you. Hallelujah. Listen to me, we're rounding up. There are very anointed people, very anointed people who don't know how to speak before great men. Because to them, every gathering of people is a church service. And then God sends you now to your destiny helper and you don't know how to speak and they throw you away back to the prison although you can interpret dreams you didn't understand the protocol of seeing pharaoh because you ignore the person who can teach you how to communicate so you find out that the ministries never cross nigeria because no other region can accept you you have not been trained to understand global leadership and you don't know how to synergize spirituality with people's culture you travel to another person's culture they jail you as a man of god because you do not understand the terms there are other ministries that the revelation god is giving them should go to the whole earth but your resentment for wealth has kept you poor and so nobody can hear your voice no tapes no books no nothing because prosperity that will give it wings is not there i can look at a congregation and tell in a split second the dimension they are ignoring because i see prayer warriors who the the oldest person there may be 60 years no car no house no school fees the moment they are driving children from school fees, it's all, it's all the prayer warriors' children that return back home because they have ignored it. Now, let me tell you something about imbalance. Your imbalance makes you represent, misrepresent God to your territory because they are depending, unbelievers are depending on the idea you give them about God. Make sure you give them a balanced perception. Don't present to them a God who empowers people and removes prosperity. Don't present to them a God who all that he does is to give them money and their spiritual lives. They are not saved. They are not born again. They are going to hell. But they have money. That's a misrepresentation. Don't present to them a man of God that is anointed, anointed, and there's no room to teach the word. So you have a congregation of members that never grow. You have occultists in churches and they never, never grow. They don't understand the principles they destroy their homes half of a church is divorced with people because the teaching ministry there is no teaching priest there is power 
but there is no wisdom to share the ministry that keeps homes together are we together or you can have a crowd of people who never pray the prayer warrior in that whole church prays only for one hour because that dimension has been ignored we're going to pray one last prayer balance my life balance my life lift your voice and cry balance my life Lord I receive leadership Lord I receive prayer Lord I see I receive wisdom through the word Lord I receive favor Lord I receive excellence Lord I receive the warfare dimension I receive the prophetic I receive the deliverance dimension of the world every provision that the grace of God affords even if it is not working in my life I am open-minded towards the body no criticism and no resentment I repent from criticizing any and every man of God regardless of the limitations I open myself to the multifaceted dimensions of God resident within his ecclesia I receive the dimension that brings speed I receive the dimension that brings establishment I receive the dimension that brings glory I receive the dimension that brings increase I receive are you praying Lord until now I've not seen the need to be filled with the Holy Ghost I thought it was just something for Pentecostals but right now I open my spirit to receive is a dimension needed in my life in your name we will rise I don't know you reign in your name Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer. Lord, put a dimension of love for the body in me. Love, love. When there is no love, criticism will remain. When there is no love, sarcasm and resentment will remain. Open your mouth and cry. Love for the body. Love for every church. Love for every man of God regardless of their dimensions regardless of their limitations regardless of their imperfections lord we embrace them we love them if they are part of the body they are the beloved lift your voice no longer will i resent any man of god no longer will i resent any church no longer will i resent any fellowship any gathering of believers my propositions against them may be legitimate but it still is not enough reason even if you are not part of them wish them well even if you are not part of that church wish them well even if you are not part of that prayer group wish them well even if you are not part of that christian organization wish them well you are not part of the mission agents wish them well talk well about them Talk well about their leaders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Direction. That's what I hear. God is giving men direction. It's like an anointing. It will come on you, outside and inside. Direction, an end to that confusion. Right now, it's coming like light. But then you will hear him direct you. Direction, direction, direction. What is that area of confusion? His light shines upon it right now. For marriage, direction, direction, direction. 
direction for where to settle down geographic location direction is coming by the holy ghost direction somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you is coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction Hallelujah. I'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone. And the Lord is saying, Take it out. Lord, where are those people whose destinies have been buried? As I'm speaking right now, inside and outside. Right now, right now. As I speak. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now. Where you are sitting. You will receive a visitation. I pull it out. This is a miracle service. I pull it out now. Oh yes. Release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny. Something is happening to you where you are. Something is happening to you where you are. begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside lord we receive what you are doing yeah. sit down if you can those under the anointing just leave them John 3 16 I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. 
Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast. Check it right now. That devil has gone back to hell. Please check it quickly and come out. If they are under the anointing, when they, when they are alright, let them come out very quickly. Let them come out quickly. Augustina. Augustina. I'm hearing a name like Augustina. Augustina. If there's someone like that, you can just make your way to the front quickly. Augustina. The Lord is judging evil in your family. This is oppression. This is what I'm seeing. Oppression. As it's happening to you, there's somebody outside. This same anointing is touching the person outside. The second overflow, the anointing of the Spirit is touching somebody outside. The Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness. Because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft. It has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify i release both of you prophetically in the name of jesus christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah i'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family god wants me to minister to you are five five people i don't know if there is a mother i'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all Please, when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son please listen don't worry about what is happening just let me have your attention please he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now Please help her, wrap her. I command that spirit to leave her right now. Now. And never return. In the name of Jesus. Release her family. Release. I see a lot of money being tied. Release it now as you go. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, He gave His only begotten Son. Hallelujah. 
For God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son. And please don't be confused. There is a name. That son is called Jesus. Because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father. But the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophet abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of jesus christ and then the bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister to are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life. Like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. 
he was invincible the bible records above situations above circumstance with unlimited power yet a man of extreme self-control he knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet there would be so many sick people like the ten lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 i can of my own do nothing as i see my father do so he came to show us the prototype of the true christian life a life that is completely yielded to the will of the father void of self-ambition void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of christ a life that is crucified with christ are we together now and then the bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago we know it as the passion of the christ it started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him john chapter 6 says except you eat my flesh and drink my blood you cannot be part of me you cannot have my life so while they were taking the communion they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know i have the power to free you he said, ah, 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 ah. he said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life are we together now it's one thing to give your child it's another thing for the child to agree he can refuse jesus had the right to refuse in fact he was tempted to negotiate it he said father if it be possible you are the all wise god there is another way you can do this thing but then he remembered nevertheless i told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant are we together now the father gave jesus jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the bible says we all like sheep have gone astray right he said every man has gone his own way with our ideas about god our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down i'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down i'll call you now they're all looking at me um sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name aaron kelvin just get somewhere they can sit around and i'll attend to you now just five minutes let me establish what hallelujah 
So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me. Listen, please. About to destroy me. And the Bible testifies that I have no power in myself. And then someone comes. And while I'm on my way to destruction, he interrupts. And he says, I love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way. This is what I want you to do. Stand back and watch me pay the price. And while he was on the way, while they were flogging him, in his mind he was saying, mankind, I hope you are watching. This would have been you. I hope you are watching. I hope you are watching the scars. As he began to bleed, he said, I hope you are watching. See, if two people come and they tell you they love you, the best answer to give those two people is I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? All kinds of things have told you they love you. But they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him. He gave his health. The father gave him. He gave his prosperity. The father gave him. When we say his life. Let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away in exchange. The Bible says he was rich, but he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion, but he laid it aside. I hope you know that they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33-year-old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen. If you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived. Because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one, I guarantee you. People have been crucified. But you don't know what that meant in the spirit. A lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening. He became Adam from Gethsemane. From Gethsemane to the cross, he was no longer the Christ. He was Jesus, Adam, the very man of sin. Mortality came upon him. Please listen. And the father kept watching. He had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, it was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness. And he said, if it's for you, I will do it. But he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight. Three words that represented victory. It is finished. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't study English. But I know that when a man says it is finished, 
it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to god he said it is finished you now will come through my own invitation my own access like i organize a program and i invite someone and while you are about to drive him i say no 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 that's my guest come but you are not only his guest he also made you the one to be celebrated please listen there is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what i want to teach us When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam and every man that came from him let me have the keys revelations 1 verse 1 when you read down what i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys he collected the keys listen access to the earth access to dominion access to god's life that's the most important part the life of god i'm going to explain it when he resurrected watch this did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven it would just be that he was victorious and then the bible says according to the book of hebrews that he went to heaven as the high priest the lamb the sacrifice as everything and then he took his blood poured it upon that tabernacle and said father you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just god your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this I really want you to get a revelation of this it will change your life every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess of of justice begins to speak i will not fight it but remember that i not only paid the price i paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path are we together now when that happened a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen 
you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ is an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we're in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and I abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that I have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believers victory is what Christ did on the cross but not just what Christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh I know what he did no let's continue John 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up. it's not enough to know what Jesus did that's not where I'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no Believing in God doesn't give you life. Who is the him? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd believe me you will not be saved believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation are we together believe in him who is him the bible i love the way the bible puts it as many as believed in him see that brothers and sisters i am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me are we together a child believes a father a worker believes a ceo a jimmy's daughter believes in her father she doesn't believe in a ceo we believe in a jimmy adegbeye the multi-millionaire that's what you believe you will never get fatherly love from that dimension are we together now you may get financial advice you may get intelligence you may get all of this i believe in professor femi 
you will get the intellectual dimension there is a dimension of god you must believe to have life many of us have believed him as a healer you can be healed and still go to hell please hear me many of us have believed him as a savior you can have i mean you can have a what do we call it a, as a shepherd what dimension of him have you believed i will tell you now ready there is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved what is lord the word lord means a conqueror are we together now listen please it's not just a savior like the one who died he didn't resurrect as a savior he died as a savior he did not resurrect as a savior he resurrected as lord a winner a champion one qualified to transfer what he has and the bible says whoever believed that listen whoever believes in him that name that was given he said he shall not perish the word perish there is not the word go to hell are we together because the bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now thank you don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not want depend on any external impute for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a big thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i i'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from 
uh, promise and so on and so forth. And I said, take my ATM card. The point is, you don't just take it and hold it. When you take the card, something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow. You see, the life of God is not, how do I put it now? It's not like something you just put in your pocket. All right, look at this. I have this handkerchief. So we say, I have the life of God. Do you have it? Yes, no. That's not the idea of the life of God. The idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes... He begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this. Why am I always failing? You will never just know that ordinarily. It takes that life to open that awareness in you. Are we together now? It's like glasses. You all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective. No. I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe. God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life I should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the suppose by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life is being frustrated within you. Because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grope in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says, have I not said, ye are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. He says, but you shall what? Die like men, men. Listen, please listen. 
an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a cause i tell you hear me brothers and sisters because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God, speakings according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left. But he said, as it is now, we do not yet see all things. Are we together now? So, you have come to answer the altar call. The life is in you. But you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we're all ready together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in Christ. The truth is they don't believe it. They just know less fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this is a sign that is an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both. Are we together this is prophecy but there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do but I have a role to play nobody gets saved just because Jesus died you will go to hell there is a response please listen the idea of grace does not mean not participating no the idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing, you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple. But it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night 
and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back i want you to live victorious if all you think is healing you will be frustrated if all you think is on my think god's life and all its content is away the life of god that can become any and everything any and everything christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom he's been made unto me strength he's been made unto me prosperity that life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the bible says whoever believes in him you receive but that life begins to teach you certain things and you respond to those teachings please listen to me part of what that life teaches you is that satan is a trickster he's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you the bible says he left jesus for a season the next time he would come he didn't come directly again he came through peter and jesus said i still detect you and the devil says do not i mean god said do not be unaware speaking through the apostle of the devil's strategy are we listening to me please because many people get up bragging i'm not under any cause i'm not under this christ has redeemed me from the curse of the lord that's not a lie but you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ and i really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then he says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming um, you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond remember during our time of fasting we're showing you different mysteries these are all the components that are called the life of god right he gave you life but it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit so satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons one they have rejected the life and the solution to that is an altar call i'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering the second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as 
free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always a participation. That's what we call koinonia. Everybody say participation. If you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith. You believed I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction. Waiting for your participation. You got up. Your faith. He calls it your faith. So, what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, his standing up is a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Hey, Jimmy, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me. Although he has not seen it. So he's putting my integrity to the line. It's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looked for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not, stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna, and built it excellently it's about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking God, this my this I've been bleeding for six months non-stop. And God said, If I spare not Jesus, I will not spare anything. Whatever it would take me to prove myself, I will do it. 
if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am yeah. is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am hallelujah if the father did not give jesus it's like a man listen it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said i'm a just person and he punished his wife then somebody throws alarm and say oh guy you know we are nigerians what do you think he's going to do you say that's my wife inside the gutter i'm a military man this is my wife i paid the price for six months to get a yes from her she's in that gutter I don't know the consequence of my action if you think i'm going to forgive you listen if it took god refusing to even give jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake then i assure you whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night <laughs> hallelujah do you believe me we are going to pray and say lord help my own belief that listen 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 that spirit that makes me keep wondering can god do it listen don't don't make that foolish statement tonight i i was praying on the tonight before i came here i was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding if you know the story behind that dear woman she shared it here all kinds of things when I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray i have a part to play i lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able are you praying Able 
to do just what he said he will do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you yes the part don't give up don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you he's able listen listen the second prayer point i already sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship, mountain of cancer, mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight. In the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond please listen do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4 don't turn there the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me sit down sir watch this it says they saw a man who had been there and he he, he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms Peter and John and he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak I put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not God will not just get up and act listen it was God that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say Lord I put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray Lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh God we are here put pressure on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up baba baba rada bala daba shake it up raska daba lada bas we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue 
there are people here I don't want you to waste your time and I don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the Bible says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of God I have heard your word I have been struggling with this thing but tonight I truly want to dedicate everything my all to Jesus Christ or you are saying man of God I have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and I need to make my way straight with the Lord I'm tired of where I am those two categories of people inside and outside I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now God bless you quickly please I'll count just one to five if the Holy Ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to Jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me God bless you run to Jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny Koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying Lord I'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this Easter Friday I give everything to you keep coming you are saying Lord Easter Friday you died for God so loved me he died for me I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying Lord I'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat keep coming hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid No man condemns you The mercy The mercy at me all of you in front some of you are crying I don't care what you have done this one decision remember Jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well I don't know what you are talking about but I've been crucified with Christ 
he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and say no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just think there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty clothes in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening God bless you. Every other person begin to pray in the spirit. Rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit. And say, Lord, my time for visitation is here. I won't give up. No, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on until my change comes. Lord, I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. 
is being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly, quickly, please, your prayer request. Listen, for those of us who are just coming, I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. When he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly. And then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones Please make sure the online community participate. There's a God that answers prayers here. Remember we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers help them. If I were you, I will begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life. begin to pass your requests very quickly very quickly very quickly my goodness I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place that's why I'm saying we should hurry up we feel the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from Ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti we passed a small village please listen 
a small village, the border between Kwara State and Ekiti State. And I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life. I saw the obituaries of people. Listen. 132 years. 120 years. It's like nobody died except they were 100 and something. And in my mind, I was saying, Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long. And the, the interesting part of it, listen, is that the people, they are not on glasses. Their dentitions are still exact. They don't use crutches. They are walking firm. One of them was a senior apostle that died last year, 132, serving in the ministry. Alive and doing well. When I saw those obituaries, I said there must be a grace for longevity. There, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity. And I told the guys, I said, when we're coming back, we're stopping here. You can trust me. Oh, the law of honor. As soon as we got there, we stopped and we came out. We went to the women. They could not understand English. Please, quickly, with a request. And we told them, we said, we're pastors. We went to minister in equity. And we're going back to the north. But we discern that there is a special anointing, a strange grace for longevity. And we want them to release upon us. And then a lot of things happened that I may not say here. And then they took us to one old man. And the man just sat on his chair. When we went, they interpreted. And they told him, we came to receive that unction for longevity. The man looked at us. He said, we should all kneel down. And we got down on our knees. And this guy began to pray and prophesy. It's on record. I'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play. It he was in Yoruba. I didn't care what he was saying, Ejimi. All I know is that he was speaking a language. And my spirit was receiving it. This guy kept prophesying, releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us. I said, that's right. I knew that there's no mistake about this. The moment we finished with him, honored him, sowed the seed into his life, appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room. She just opened the door. And I saw pictures from one side to the other. She started showing me the pictures. I thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age. You know, like Ketura. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as I was feeling. I knew I got this thing. Immediately she got it. I told her, I said, let's snap. I held her hands. And we got to the place. We'll show you the video. And we snapped. And I said, I'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something. Alive. Dentition complete. Can speak. No glasses. Ah. It was you I was thinking about. I was happy to transport that grace. Brothers and sisters, we brought it. It must land on you tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I was just looking. I was looking to empty everything I had. I said, what kind of grace is this? We went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years. Alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years. One, how many? 41. I saw the obituary. 
he just died 141 I said I got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating I didn't see any hospital around there I just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of God you are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the, the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that I always believed it but now that I've seen it ah, there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football I just remember that old woman I said plane you are joking I'm surrounded by too many mysteries please believe me hallelujah 86 years still a lecturer 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand lift the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now 
right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shape baba kata altars 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 right now shake it 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 in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it bakata baba 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 is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies jakatarata mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three is like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray
go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ father we turn go ahead and pray lord my request is turned into a testimony i must testify by the anointing of the holy spirit standing upon the eternal counsel of God the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass the burden is lifted in the name of Jesus are not angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place in the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth, we command the firmaments, we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every burden placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus and end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus blind eyes open Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. And receive the prophecy. You can. I saw a spirit. And, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written. In the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Shake te kapa. Shake rosata. The kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed 
and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a man too the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started dearly beloved 
I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.